Quick reminder, when asked a question, please wait for the microphone and please state your first, last name, and media affiliation. Thank you. I like it better. Once our fellows here are settled, we can open up the floor to questions. Any takers? Right here. No. I guess I can go first to Alec Bussey, 24-7. Um, for the two guards, um, you guys have talked so much this season about the importance of being able to keep opponents out of the paint. How do you go about doing that against Marcus Damask and Terrence Shannon? I'd say just sticking, to, sticking true to what we have done this whole season and uh, what we do is uh, be physical and dictate, um, go out there with physicality and uh, just what we do, I'd say. Yeah, pretty much same thing he said. Uh, do the same thing we've been working on since June, dictating, being physical, and um, yeah, that's really that's pretty much it. Rob, to follow up for you, when they are able to get their wings or their guards into the paint, what role do you and Hassan play in making it difficult for them to get a shot off cleanly? Uh, same sort of thing. Still that physicality piece. Uh, meeting them at the rim, not letting them get an easy shot off, but making sure we don't foul as well. I uh, can't give him free points at the line. So making it hard to finish without fouling. Right here in the back right, guys. John Fanta from Fox Sports. It's for any of you guys. To have the nation's number one defense certainly is, is impressive. You look at Coach, he's, he's got a he, – he looks like a, just a great guy, easygoing guy, but, but obviously inside the doors of your gym – I got to imagine practices here, very intense. Give us a peek behind the scenes of what an Iowa State practice looks like and how you guys have grown into the best defensive team in college basketball. I'd say uh, practices are super physical. We go after each other. Everything we do is competitive, uh, starting with our stretch, making sure that we keep a high level of intensity, high level of energy throughout practice, um, and then the the more intensity we can bring, uh, the, the shorter practices can be just because we have that high intensity level uh, and we're getting a lot of stuff done at a, at a high level during our practices. Like Rob said, uh, every drill we do is a competition. Uh, that, that brings out the best in, in each one of us and uh, especially those defensive drills, we take a lot of pride in uh, just be, being physical. There's not a lot of fouls that are called, so you really got to go out there and just, just work for it and who wants it more at the end of the day. And uh, That's where our, our physicality and, and our defensive mindset comes from. You trying to get anything in that? Yeah. All right. I said everything. Cool. <laughs> Any questions here? Right here, in the right. Matt Rybaltowski with Forbes. Congrats on the uh, great win over UH a couple of weeks ago. For all three of you, there's been a litany of sports betting scandals across the state. The, the uh, quarterback from your school was suspended, but a few players were exonerated uh, from, from, from that case. So just how much has coach emphasized that if you make one bet, that's it. You could be off the team. It could jeopardize your future NBA potential. It could cost you millions of dollars. Has that been a point of em emphasis this year? I'd say a little bit, especially after what happened with um, the things in our state at the University of Iowa and Iowa State. Just being aware of it uh, is the most important thing. And uh, obviously, we know that that's we can't do those things. And uh, just being more aware and having more people come and talk, talk about it to us and um, just knowing the ins and outs and everything that, that's not legal for us to do is, was something that was big for us in the off season. But um, really just at the end of the day, not, not thinking too much about the, the things that had went on and moving on from the stuff that happened at our university and uh, just realizing how we can learn from it. Anything else here? Right here in the middle. Uh, for Taman, I know that um, you didn't play against Terrence when you were in high school as he was at Texas Tech because you're just a sophomore um, and he's in his second year at Illinois. But you obviously remember watching him, I'm sure, and on film. What's the most impressive thing about his game? So there's there's a few things. Uh, definitely just his aggressiveness uh, on the offensive side and his, his playmaking ability. Uh, his speed, he uses speed very well, and uh, that's something that we're going to key in defensively, trying to stop. Um, he's a great overall player and uh, looking forward to the matchup. Go ahead and back, John. 
John Fanta, Fox Sports again. Taman, when you look at it from year one to year two, we knew coming in this season, you know, the coach talked about how you were going to take on an increased role for this team, and obviously you have. What was that process like, and looking back on it, and, and what's the reward here of, of knowing that you were going to get the keys to the car and, and that you got, you've been able to drive it here to the Sweet 16? Yeah, there was a lot of talk going into the off season just about uh, what what they wanted to get out of me going into my my sophomore year, and uh, just knowing that the trust that the coaches, especially TJ, had, and the trust that he was putting in, in me uh, to to be one of those leaders for this team was was big for me. So just taking that next step, uh, being a leader, was was something that was big, and um, I my work ethic is something that I take pride in, and just going out there and just trying to do do the best I can do and uh, lead by example, I would say. And uh, the team that we have this year has put in so much work and uh, it's been so easy um, to be a leader of this team because all those guys just put in the same amount of work as me and um, we enjoyed uh, this ride together. So just to follow up on that, all you guys are talking about how great Odds is. Do you have a favorite TJ story? (laughs) Are you guys scared of him? No. You guys were. More of a respect thing. Yeah, I'd say it's more of a it's more of a respect thing for sure. Just just knowing who he is, and I wouldn't say there's any really stories that stick out. Just uh, the passion that he shows for for Iowa State, and um, just coming after out of big wins and stuff. Just celebrating with the guys is is something that's huge. So it's not true that when he walked down, you guys were playing blackjack, having a great time. Right. All of a sudden, he walks down, and Taman gets all scared. And doesn't say a thing. I, I'd say it's just his his presence is is well known uh, from everyone around him. Just how he holds himself to that standard. Hey, when, when you were recruited out of high school, you know Tyrese had just left, and I think a lot of people thought the program might take a step back because he transferred to Texas. Um, how much of a chip in the shoulder was it for you? coming in and kind of showing people in the way you do, which is really quietly that, hey, you know what? Like, I can be as good as him, if not better. Yeah, definitely just having that chip on my shoulder uh, coming in. A lot of people's thoughts were I was going to be back up to him. And obviously, things worked out the way they worked out. And I was able to uh, step in and take that starting role. But uh, just the work ethic and the, that chip on my shoulder that I've kind of been under underlooked uh, is just something that I hold on to and uh, just go out there and, and do what I can do. Take one here in the middle. Um, for either of the two guards, you guys obviously just played against one of the biggest teams in the country in Washington State. You now match up against another team that's top 10 in the country and, and average height. Do you feel like having experience against a team that's so tall and long like Washington State so recently can give you such an advantage against Illinois? I say yeah, because we know we kind of know what to expect. They kind of guard the same way as Washington State. You know, we know we won't be able to, you know, kind of force it in there. We got to play smarter, play off two feet. And, um, yeah, we know what to expect. So I feel like it's it's definitely a good thing. Anything else? Yeah. Okay, good. Everyone all set? All right, guys, you guys can head back. Good luck tomorrow. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you. About three, four, five minutes here, we'll be joined by head coach T.J. Altsberger.
Welcome, Coach. Whenever you're settled, if you just want to maybe give us an opening thoughts, statement, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, great to see everybody today. Uh, truly is an honor to be here. Uh, extremely proud of the young men in our program for the continued hard work and how they re represent our university every single day. Uh, excited uh, for the challenge that's in front of us. And, uh, yeah, ready for any questions. Thanks, Coach. Open up the floor. I get to decline. Uh, yes. Quite, yeah. Yes, you do. Yep. <laughs> Any that don't come from you. John, right here in the back. TJ, John Fanta from Fox Sports. We were talking with Taman, and he he spoke about the conversations with you, the build up from year one to year two. How would you speak to this kid's character and the way that that he's grown? into this role as being a leader for this program and what stood out to you the most about that evolution? Yeah, we're really fortunate. When Taman came into our program, so often with freshmen, they have so many things to learn in terms of leadership. And Taman, because of his upbringing, because of his family, foundation, so many great people in Ames, he has so many natural leadership characteristics that he brought in with him as a freshman. And so we benefited from those so much in that first season. And then as you look into year two, and the things I really valued is when the season ended, I think Taman took it really personal. Um, his ability to shoot the basketball is something that some would, would have had in question. And the work that he put in the gym um, and the time that he invested, the pride, uh, you can see it now in the games. Just He's done the hard work, but there's also such a thing as like your spirit and finding a way to just will shots in like he does based on your character and your hard work. And so he really committed to that. Uh, he knew that he'd have to be more vocal. And I challenge him, you know, to this day about we want your personality to come out more. We don't want you to change. We want you to be the best version of yourself. But it, it'd be great if your teammates get to know more of that because you, you take advantage of more of those opportunities. And that's something that we've continued to challenge him with. And and I'd say that the final piece is it's a big difference when you're going from, you know, somebody who's a freshman and some other guys are towards the top of the scouting report every single night and you're one of the guys, it's a big step when you're going to be the guy or at the top of that. And knowing the responsibility that goes along with that on a daily basis, can't have a bad day, can't have a tough practice, uh, can't have emotional reaction, outburst, can't. Um, you know, you've got to be solution oriented and, and always be driven to solve your problems immediately. And, and he's done such a great job of that. Um, there's nobody that could be a, a better leader in terms of character, dependability and work ethic on a daily basis than what Tame and Lipsy does for our program. So here in the middle, Coach. Hi, Coach. Alec Bussey, 24-7. Um, how much of an impact do you think your defensive glass could play on the outcome of tomorrow night's game? Our defensive, yeah, I mean, look, there, there's so many elements that happen in the game. You know, we're certainly a program that takes pride in what we call our daily habits, the things that we do every single day. And rebounding is, is a big part of that. As we start practice or we do our workouts, our guys know how important it is. They know what the standards are. They know what the demands are. And they know the impact it has not just on – the success, but the overall, the mentality of the game. There's there's so many mentality, um, you know, challenges that are going on throughout the course of a basketball game, and and rebounding is one of those things that, you know, the team that usually benefits there is the more aggressive team, and so for us, we recognize the strength in our opponent and how great they are going to the offensive boards. Uh, they go with force. They, you know, they're one of the top teams in the country. They've got multiple guys. They've got great size, length, athleticism. And so we recognize that strength of theirs. And yet we feel like on a daily basis the things that we do prepare us for these type of opportunities, and we're confident in that plan. Coach, back right here. Ke Kevin Sweeney, SI. You talked about Taman's leadership and you know the, the example he sets. I know uh, Coach Hurley was in here earlier talking about guys who are, are drama-free. I'm curious, in, in this day and age with – all the stuff that goes on, you know, with the portal and you know, the 
pre-portal and tampering, like how valuable has it been for your program to have a leader like that who seems to be at least pretty drama free? Yeah, he doesn't get caught up in a whole lot of nonsense. He keeps his focus on, on what matters, what's important, um, being the, you know, what he can do and who he can be. Um, I don't know a whole lot about like social media and all those things and what guys do in their free time, but if, if you're to see Taman on a daily basis, you see a focused guy, you see a guy who has great maturity, uh, mental makeup, um, just stays in that space, in that zone every single day. Coach Front Lefter. TJ Ancastable <coughs> from the Chicago Sun-Times. This defense that you guys boast, was the willingness from your guys always there to buy into that end of the floor and, and the culture you guys are developing defensively? We try to be very intentional and mindful in the recruiting process to look at young people that um, that understand to develop, to play at your best, to be the best team you can be, that defending and showing unity on that side of the basketball is extremely important. Yet, everybody can talk about it. It takes the daily commitment every single day to guard the basketball, you know, um, close out, block out, all these things that are so important to being good defensively. And we've been fortunate. Our guys have developed a sense of pride in doing that. I really felt like earlier in the season, our first home conference game, we played a really good Houston team as good as, you know, maybe as good as any team in the country. And when you get a win like that, <laughs> and it was, excuse me, <coughs> it was in the 50s. So, you know, you want to score more. You want to have more prolific offensive output. What happens is they say, well, this can be really good for us if we buy in and continue to buy in and stay the course defensively, end up winning the game 57-53. But you feel so great in that locker room after that, all those sacrifices, all that hard work, all that unity, all that time, you beat the number two ranked team in the country. I truly believe that gave our guys a greater sense of purpose and confidence. It's one thing to say buy-in, but they also need that validation that says the hard work is paying off, and that was a big night for us. Coach, all the way left here. Hey, uh, Trevor Haas, Boston Globe. Just some thoughts on Hassan's uh, evolution as a player and his maturity and obviously come back from an injury. He's really hit a stride late in the season. Hassan, at the conclusion of last season, we had very direct communication. And he had said to me that he wanted more. He wanted to, he wanted to earn more. He wanted to develop more. He wanted to take those steps. And I remember looking at him and saying, well, how hard are you going to work for it? What, what changes – what choices are you going to make on a daily basis so that those things happen? Because it's your choice to do those things. And you see what he did in the weight room and the weight that he's gained, um, his confidence in terms of finishing, facilitating offense. Uh, and then defensively, he's all over the place, extremely disruptive, ball screen defense, post defense, on the glass, rim protection. So – Hassan has given us a whole added dimension, especially here late in the season. You've seen over the last couple of weeks the threat that he poses as a lob threat at the rim, going to get you know, a basketball up at 12 feet, which not many guys can get to. Um, his, the speed he plays with, uh, the mental focus that he's brought to the table, and he's really, uh, he's really elevated our team. Any other questions out <coughs> Right here to the right, Coach. Matt Rybaltowski with Forbes. TJ, you, you may have dealt with this at UNLV with being in the backyard of the world's largest sports books, but in light of what happened at Temple, how much is being done to mitigate the risk of point shaving throughout the sport? Well, I think, you know, from our uh, vantage point, we try to educate the young men in our program and utilize the resources that we have available, you know, to make sure that they're mindful that, they know, um, you know, what decisions need to be made, what the conduct and the standards are at all times, and, and we do everything we can. Our administration does a tremendous job bringing in people from the outside and trying to educate them. So we'll continue just like we do in all aspects for the young men in our program. We want to put them in position to be successful. Uh, we hold it as a high priority to do the right thing. And so for us, we will continue to, to keep our focus there. Anything else out there? 
If uh, you'll bear with me, Coach, I'm going to try and take a question here from Zoom. Uh, let me unmute you. Paul, from USA Today, if you're able to speak, uh, if you're still with us, you can yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, TJ. Um, I actually want to ask you about your fashion sense. Uh, hopefully you don't decline this question. Um, can you tell me when and, and why you decided to go with polos and, and what the, the purpose of that was? And if you ever hear anything from fans or people behind the bench who say, hey, what size is your shirt, Coach, or anything of that regard? There you go, Goodman. You got the kind of question you wanted, right? <laughs> um, I'd say this. It's always interesting to me in coaching that I'm a guy that believes a lot in discipline, regimen, accountability, daily habits. It's always interesting when coaches demand that the players all wear the same thing and then the coaches all wear something different. It's always kind of stuck with me of like, what would I say to a player on the team if they say, well, why are all the coaches wearing different things and why are we wearing the same thing? So when we came to Iowa State, came back for the head coaching opportunity, it was important to me that how everybody dressed on a daily basis was exactly the same. So if you were to be at one of our practices, everybody, every manager, support staff member, coach, we all wear the same exact thing every single day. It's a shorts and t-shirts uh, with our category five culture with our saying on the back in practice. And I'd say the same thing makes sense to me in a game setting of why wouldn't we all wanna look, our, our team and our coaching staff is, is in unity. And one way that we can show that is, you know, through how we dress, through what we wear, and that we're all on the same page and we're all connected. And so for us, we've taken a lot of pride in everybody doing that. Now, if you specifically mean the size of my polo shirt, if that's really what we're getting at here and you didn't really care a whole lot about the culture piece, I'd say to you, uh, we started at a bigger size. Now, when you have my frame and you're built more like a wrestler than a basketball coach, it can become a challenging because come challenging because I have short arms. So if you wear this size polo, the arms are long and hanging down past your elbows. If you wear this polo, it looks smaller. So it gives me a greater sense of self-discipline each day that I've got to fit into the one that our good friend Jeff Goodman would call a schmedium, <laughs> uh, that I wear that size and opt for that. It helps me stay as disciplined and accountable as I need to be to our program wearing that shirt. Any follow-ups to that, Jeff? <laughs> if there's uh, no other questions, Coach, we'll let you head back. Good luck tomorrow night. Thanks so much. Thank you. Right. Just a quick reminder.